All right, let's talk about early ovals in 54, 55, and this car and what's unique. A lot of people just think this is another oval window. This is an early oval. When they become 55 and older, and I'm gonna say mid, I guess, I don't know exactly the dates, okay, because there's dates and all this stuff. They become very unique cars. They're very different than the, the 56, 57s. Um, and there's a lot of discrepancies I found in books. There's a book, you know, that talks about early ovals. I forget what it's called. The handbook, I guess, the oval handbook. And there's a, a lot of discrepancies in those books. And I'm not going to argue with you know the discrepancies uh, or, or with the with the book that they're not correct or whatever I'm gonna say that most of the time they're right okay those books are usually pretty good but there's a lot of different information so some of you guys might have an, a 54 that has override bumpers on it like this car did um, they did make them so if you can see here this is a photo from the Samba website and it shows this is an auto show in uh, trying to think it's I don't know where it's at it's in the US uh, but if you look here these are the dealer this is the dealer here uh, Reynolds and Johnson Northern California Oregon and Utah they have dealers in all the places so what do you see here let's take a zoom in look let's see what we're looking at this is a photo dated in September of 1954 because that's when the auto show was. And what do you see there? I see heart tail lights. So that tells me it's a 54, not a not a late 54 or 55 early, whatever you want to call it. It's a 54 clearly and it has override bumpers. So again, I'm not an expert at oval windows. I'm not the guy that knows everything about these cars. I just ended up with one. I've had a couple of them. And I had an opportunity to buy another one just like this car. I don't know the date it was, but it was supposed to be an early 55. It had the same, shared all the same parts that this car shares. This is a November of 54 car. So according to the Samba, according to the Oval's handbook, in which we just looked at, they say that they didn't have override bumpers in 1954. And I just showed you a photo that they did. Um, I'm not saying that the book's all wrong. I'm saying that if you have an early car, it would be a good idea to have that book to, you know, if you don't have all the original parts and you're trying to figure out what they are, or, Maybe it's, you know, dilapidated or something and missing stuff or whatever. That's a good book to have to know what you have. But what we have here is we have a really good original complete car. I know it's a part right now, but we do have an original complete car with matching paint on three fenders. Um, you know, the hood's the correct one. Had matching paint on it, of course. We've got things like these bumper holes that are stamped. I know that you can't really tell that those are. But if you go to the inside of the bumper, where the bumper attaches, if you look at the inner panel, it's hard for, you to, for, hard for me to videotape this part. Um, if you look at the inner panel right there, you can see that it's actually cut out for the overrider up above here so the inner panel is actually clearanced already so that tells me that they were obviously thinking ahead and they were making these ram protection is what somebody said bumpers and i've looked up on the samba i've also seen ram protection as an option i don't know if it was an option or if it was all u.s models it's really kind of a gray area according to the handbook it is uh was late 55 or early 
56 is when they actually started the overrider bumpers uh, requirement because they actually moved the taillights up to make room for the clearancing for the bumpers. So does that mean that a 54 or 55 uh, didn't come with those bumpers? Um, we've just proven it. It, it, it. it was an option. It was either an option or they sent them out automatically that way because both the cars that were in those photos had US spec bumpers on them. So a lot of times you're doing a restoration and you find a lot of interesting things along the way. I think the car telling you the story is always the best thing if you have one that's original like this one. And these are not cut out. There's no way. Nobody's that good. Um, and if you look here on the inside, I know this has been primed, but if you look here, that's got the original Strato Silver on it. And there was actually Strato Silver on the inside of that. So that tells me that these were probably US spec. Now, this is the where you run into the weirdness, okay? Look at how many holes are in here. They got one, two, three holes. And then this one up here, I don't know, that looks like it's maybe drilled out. Who knows? Is this correct? Is this the original fender for the car? I'm, more than likely it is. That's what, you know, it has the correct stuff on it. Okay, it's an oval fender. I don't know all this stuff, but I'm just trying to show you guys. And maybe you guys can comment those things down there below. Now, since these are very rare to find the original fender, um, is there a lot of information and data on these? And I don't know. Um, but like I said, I'm not an expert and I'm not claiming to be one. So here's what I think maybe they had is, uh, they were making hard tail lights at this point in Europe, right? And this was kind of an afterthought for some reason. The U.S. wanted these tail lights. So... Uh, if you notice, when you when you put this on here, it actually covers that hole. Okay, that's weird. I don't see any wire holes in here, but these are original rubber, so that's interesting. But um, so it covers that hole, and I think this part right here goes is supposed to go inside that to hold the rubber in place. If I remember correctly, it looks like it was kind of boogered up. You can see it came off this fender and it was in that hole right there. Okay. Maybe that's for the wires. I don't know. Again, I didn't take it off, so I don't know. So, but I think that this was positioned for the heart tail light and then they just made it universal and didn't have separate drillings for these tail lights, which would make sense to me in the factory. Right or wrong? I don't know. So again, according to the Samba, this is a 54. Uh, they changed in January of 55. And I've looked up a lot of the stuff I've been reading for a few days now on different things on this car. Um, and again, am I reading stuff that's correct or not? I don't know. Um, so this is a, supposed to be a 54. Um, but I've also read that people say that this is an early 55 uh, when they change the tail lights some people think that that's when they change the year model again I don't know that um, but it was November of 54 built so apparently those tail lights that I showed you are available on US spec cars between October and April of October of 54 and April of 55 so on 55 was a split year. So if you wanted to call this a 55, it's a split year. Um, and what they did is at some point, and, and everybody thinks they know when the point is, you know, the books all say one point, And then I've read other people say different things is they went from the uh, US spec car, the US spec car, didn't have semaphores okay now and then they went away from the rib doors I guess in 56 
And I think the later ones had rib doors. I don't really know. It's gray. I've seen on the Samba people post that they had a three-fold rag top in uh, August. The original three-fold rag top on the car and it had uh, flat doors. So there was a lot of weird things during this time. You know, they were changing over things. So like for instance, on my 60, 61 bug, uh, they're supposed to have a three hole hood. So it didn't have a, they changed from the, the four tab to like the same hood, but it had just three holes in it. And in 61. So if you look at all the books, it says 61 three hole. My 61 had a four tab original hood on it. So there's a lot of things when they were doing their changes, there's a lot of parts that they were just kind of running out of this. So they just use them. And if you talk to a lot of EW guys, um, that's really the correct thing that normally happened. So you might have a later than uh, April 55 that had semaphores and might maybe it wasn't a European car there might be some of those things going on that nobody really knows about there's some mysteries in these cars but here's typically what was supposed to come on these um, on this particular model that's different than most oval windows or later model cars so guys say to me Mike why did you fix this old hood why don't you just get a new one well on these old hoods there was very specific things that were different than the later models um, these shared with the split window if you look down here see how that has three holes in the side there this had a longer hood bracket it also had a different support that goes along here it also has that little triangle thing that's only on the early cars. And these hoods were less prone to cracking because they had the additional support and the prop rod was up further in a better leverage point. So if you notice, this has a really long prop rod. These are very old car specific, you know, the split windows and stuff like that shared parts with these cars. So. The parts for these are a lot more expensive than the later models. That's why I was always skeptical and not wanting to really build one of these. Because if it wasn't really complete, to me it wasn't worth really trying to make it original. Really, we're really fortunate to have a car that's really complete and that has all the correct parts. Because if it didn't, so let's say I ran into a car, I know 5150 ran into a 54 and he was looking at it to buy it and it had the wrong pan didn't have numbers matching you know it had ripped doors had some cool stuff with it but it you know it 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 just by the time you went you'd never find all the parts to fix it those are a perfect candidate to do a really cool street rod type lower it you know put some wheels on it put a big motor in it but uh, to me, if you have an original car, if it's really like, like this car is, where it's got so many original parts there, you know, I almost have an obligation to the car to make it go back to original. So that's what I'm going to do. So again, this video is not meant to be a reference for you to figure out what's missing or whatever's on your old car. If you want to buy one of those books or something, that's all up to you. That might be the best way to go. This is just this car in specific, the stuff that I'm seeing, and I'm just trying to share it with you guys. Maybe you guys can help me uh, find the right stuff if I need it, and that's why I made this video. Well, the thing that was another thing was unique about this car is it has semaphores. I do have them. They do work. If you notice here where the heater knob is, that's way back between the seats. Uh, the later models were up in the front. This one had a bat wing steering wheel, unlike the later model had the flat wheel, but it was different style. I call this one a bat wing because it has these little things here. One of the things that I think is really unique here on this car, and, and I don't know, I don't have any information on it, is it had this cool, I think this is an accessory kit probably from the 50s 
you know, early 50s, where it has this big wooden knob, and I think they're rosewood. It also has this really big shift knob, which is, again, I think rosewood too. And it's really nicely formed and stuff, and you can tell it's got wood underneath there. I've taken it off and looked at it. Might be an accessory kit from the dealer from back when they bought it new. And I think I'm going to keep that on it just because it's unique. So those are some of the things with this car I like. Also, uh, if you didn't know, uh, on the early cars they had a, on the early 55s and 54s they had this big spring deck lid. I also have the old style horn. I have two of these actually. It also has a different turn signal switch than the early ones. Probably because the semaphores and the uh, steering column is different. So again, I've seen a lot of them. You've seen them for sale before and they're, the steering column is missing, stuff like that. You just can't find those parts usually very easily. Not going to say they're not available, but they're just really hard to find and really, really expensive because they share with split windows. So people think this is just a regular W deck lid. This is a W big spring deck lid. They are different. So it has a different bracket on it. So you can see here this is different. So it's like I got to do some welding there. Look, I saw those bolts. Well, this car also has these rib doors. Some of you guys may have never seen these before. And they go out like that all the way around. They have a different closure. So if you see how this works here. And it's like this here. Also, this little thing here. These are the original door panels. Apparently, US had the leatherette, which is this vinyl. And uh, these are original door handles and rings so you can see what they look like if you have an early car you know kind of unique also this car had a big lid flat top gas tank so another unique thing about this car is um, the later years they had the cutouts for the pea shooters um, so 54 50, early 55 there was no cutouts here so you know I'm gonna have to weld these back up and this would have a single pipe exhaust system so on the 54 the early 55s they had the single pipe the late model ones they had the other ones and again like I said you could maybe you could get a gotten a single pipe with your later model they just did, used up whatever they had so you, it was just kind of a the switching point you know I don't know if it's gonna be the date that you think it is this one has the original glass so it's a secure it secure it secure it and then if you look at the windshield um, it doesn't look it's ever been out of the car okay uh, and you know it, it doesn't look like it has you know maybe it has been maybe a long long time ago but I doubt it because it still has the original um, rubber so has the original stuff here and if you see there isn't any logo on it and I think that's because um, that also one of the things that they did in the US spec cars besides the headlights is they put in safety glass so I don't really know when they put the safety glass in was it at the dealer after they sent it here, was it before they sent it? Yeah, you know, again, a lot of those things are unknowns. I don't even know if the experts know. This is a, uh, a US spec headlight. I only have one of these original old ones. So this is an old, like a 54, 55, 54-ish, whatever you want to call it, headlight. If you notice, it's very elaborate compared to the later model ones. 
I do happen to have one, which is nice. Um, if you can see the difference, some of you guys have never seen one of these. I figured this would be kind of cool to film. You can get new chrome from Wellsburg West for these. Also, I don't know if I showed you, I have two of these original horns, and they do work. I checked them. So the story a little bit is that I got the car from a friend of mine. He's been saving it for years to restore it. Realized he wasn't able, he's not going to be able to do it. That's why I always tell you guys, get on your project, get it done. Um, and he uh, wanted to sell it. Of course, you know, I don't know if I told you guys the whole story in this. So I think I'll throw it in here. Um, like I was driving home and a friend of mine called me that I, he's been, he used to work at the dealer as a parts department back when you could order Volkswagen parts, you know, for these cars brand new. I could order them at the dealer. If you knew the part number, he could usually get it. So I used to get stuff from him every once in a while. And I he called me on the way home and he says, our friend wants to sell his oval. And I'm like, what year is it? He goes, 55. I'm like, oh. So is it early or late? And he goes, I don't know. It's, it's, I think it's an early. And so he started explaining to me, oh, it has this really big spring for the deck lid. It's got a couple different parts on it. And uh, I just was like making a U-turn. <laughs> I was on my way home. I was like, where is it at? <laughs> Let me go look at it, you know. And so I uh, so went over there and looked at it. And I just figured out that, you know, when I made the first video, I wasn't really telling you guys that I was going to buy it. I had already bought it. And uh, um, I was looking at everything. I still... And just trying to make sure I had all the original parts for it. Um, we determined a lot of it was original at that point. And uh, that's when I decided to go ahead and buy the car. Actually, I was kind of on the fence at that point. I actually bought it, you know, later that day. But I already put a deposit and everything. And I went back and got it. Um, but he got the car from a guy. And uh, he got a car he had a car from a guy who... Uh, all the guy wanted was the engine so it came he worked at a shop you know around here in Riverside and this car was from looks like from Santa Barbara yeah. and he uh, UCSB and this guy had bought this car from I believe the original owner and all he wanted to do was take the engine out of it so it's kind of in kind of rough shape and stuff and the guy says I don't want the car I just want the engine and my friend looks at it and he goes I'll buy it so he bought it at the time I think for 800 bucks back then which was I mean it was a little bit of money back then in the 80s to spend for an oval and uh, hung on to it to restore and then you know found out medically he couldn't do it so that's you know the way it goes sometimes guys you know get on your project get it done so anyway, that's how I ended up with this car. One of the things I am missing is the engine. So I do have a 55 engine. See, I have this engine here. It actually is a good restoration candidate. Um, it is missing a ton of the original parts. If you notice the wrong distributor, uh, it has the correct carburetor, uh, but the fuel line again is missing. Um, and for if I was going to do a complete period correct engine this has the wrong pulley down here um, but I, I, I looked it up once the numbers it's a 55 engine but I don't remember the month so being that that's a 54 built car I'm sure that this isn't the correct engine if I was going to go like 100% original which I'm probably not going to do that. I'm probably just going to do some uh, something else with the engine. I haven't got all the stuff together on that yet, but uh, I've been talking to different places about parts and all the stuff I want to do, and I might do some kind of a period correct uh, rest of mod type thing for the motor. So we will find out what that is later. So people are saying, "Hey, that's a 54." You know, we're going to call it a 54 from out here on out. 
do I really know what it is? Honestly, you know, I can go by the book, you know, or I can go by the Samba, and it's going to say it's a 54, it's a November of 54, so, um, yeah, I mean, but there's also, I've talked to other people, and they're like, no, I think it's, it's actually 55 if it had the other taillights, early 55. So, it's, you know, it is what it is. It's a November of 54. And it's a really cool car. It's going to be a really neat restoration to do. Um, it's We're going to go all original, except for the engine. I'm just trying to find anything I can. There's some issues that I have right now that I'm probably not going to be able to do. And I'm not sure is the seat situation. I don't have the front seats. So, I don't know. And maybe somebody who's more versed on them or has read the Oval's handbook, which I don't know if I want to have to take the time to read the whole thing. Um, don't have a lot of time in my life for that stuff. I read a lot, but I don't read books. Um, but the 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 floors or the the floors have the flat. I have I think. I know I have three of the seat rails. I don't know if I have all four of them. You look here, I've got this one. These two are still intact. Um, the floor obviously was taken out and going to be replaced over there. So the seat rail at some point either was missing or rusted out and got taken off. So <clears throat> this. I have three of them and it'd be nice if I had the original seats in it because they are different they're flat I guess I did get these seats with the car but these are not the correct ones because they would have been taller in the front narrower in the back and these are the opposite of that I guess I could modify them but I don't know I did see some Zwitter seats for sale. <clears throat> they wanted like fifteen hundred dollars for them. I thought that was a bit pricey, but you know, again, you know, what are you going to do? Argue about the price when you've got a car that you've only got how many of them are left? So the options are, you know, find a set of seats if I can find them, or just pull out the seat rails. I do have a set of seat rails for it. So you see here, I've got. These two seat rails, original ones, out of a later model car. That's six, you know, up to whatever, 63. So, like, if you have a 54 and you had the correct seats for it, maybe you can send some photos to the Facebook or whatever. Might help me figure out what the difference is. Um, if they could be modified to make those ones look like the early ones. Or if I'm going to cut the seat rails out. I know you, some of you guys are going to get freaked out about that, but listen, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. And I don't have seats. I don't have, looks like I'm missing one seat rail probably. I don't know once I get to that point. We'll find out later. Maybe it's in the back. Uh, don't see it back there. Once I dig the car apart, we'll find out about more about that later. But anyway, that's the unique part about this car. Um... For you, those of you guys who are interested, and if you didn't know about early ovals, you know, there was a lot of changes between between August of 50, 54 and August of 55. There's a lot of stuff that, you know, I, I'd say the books aren't always going to be right. They're going to be, you know, the, according to the book in whatever it was, I think 56, I guess, your model, is when they actually changed the bumpers to the other style. Um, apparently, from what I've been reading, a lot of guys have the late 55 is when they cha they changed the taillights, right? It was like in May or whatever. Let's see, May would be the next month after April, right? May of 55, they changed the taillights, right? So some of those had the taillights still mounted down low 
I think because the same thing as I just showed you, the fenders, they probably had the holes. They didn't want to do another set of holes, and they were doing that on the cars to put the ones down low. And if you, again, if you have a 54 that has, or a 55, and it has the uh, egg tail lights and the saw's original fenders, let us know. It'd be interesting to know about those holes in there, if they're supposed to be that way or not. Again, the last video we made on this subject was not intended to be the Bible for you guys to figure this stuff out. It's just what I was going through trying to figure out stuff on this car. Um, and then I started reading a little bit more and I decided, you know, it might be better if I just, I don't want to mislead anyone. So I decided to go ahead and make a different video on this subject and uh, kind of get a little bit better information out there and make sure that you know that you guys know I am not an expert I'm not the guy that you call and because I know all the stuff about ovals I don't know I'm not that guy I'm not that person I'm learning this stuff just like you guys are and I'm telling you what I've learned okay and maybe what I've learned is not correct maybe what I've learned is correct but what I've looked at and what I've seen is that this car had US spec bumpers, okay, like a 56. It had egg tail lights, like a 54 or 5, whatever you want to call it. And then it shared all the rest of the parts with a 54. So it's kind of unique. It's very old. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of discrepancies. It's weird between in that last few months of 55, there's like I've seen guys post, no, I have a 55, Bogus 55, it had three-fold rag top and flat doors, and, you know, it was just like, there's could have been just about anything, and they're probably just using up whatever they had left at that point in parts. If they had a stockpile of X parts, that's probably what they use, so they, you know, there's no, there's no way you can document all that and say exactly what came on something at that point. So anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Hope that was entertaining and educational and you know helps you understand the process of what I'm going through.